is Frank Everett, and welcome to Frank's Files. Welcome back to Fifth Avenue. Today, I have the privilege once again to be with Nico Landrigan, but we are in, I think, Paris about 1935. That's right. And we are at Belle Peron. I'm so excited today to be here to learn more about Suzanne Belle Peron. We have some beautiful jewels to look at, but first, Let's talk about Suzanne Belle Perone, the woman. Did she grow up in the jewelry world? Not at all. She was born 1900. Mm -hmm. Her father was a baker. Her father died when she was 13, mm. and the family had no money. Or she had a talent for drawing. But in 1916, you imagine World War I raging. Yeah. She enrolled in the Besançon Productive Arts School. They declared that she was ready for the Le Métier um, after six months, which, wow. of course, she completed the course. First in her class, fast forward quickly, uh, she graduated in 1918, mm -hmm. uh, moved to Paris. 1919, she got her first job, and it was at Boivin, which at the time was the fifth largest jewelry house in Paris. So imagine Suzanne Belperon, age 19, 19, in Paris, and within four years, she was not only the head designer, wow. but the co-directress of the firm. So she had to have incredible talent. It doesn't seem possible. And yeah. so the French fashion press started to cover Boiva, and it became known in the Paris circles that, that this young lady called Madame Belperon was making news yeah. and the collectors started to come to her. She would make her designs. She usually proposed three or four different designs and she would make them for the client's choice. So truly bespoke. Truly bespoke. So now let's go as she opens up her own salon. She didn't quite go out on her own. She was actually mm. approached and invited by one of the biggest and most influential diamond and, and colored stone dealers, especially uh, natural pearl dealers, Bernard Hertz. Hertz, yeah. And so he invited her to basically have carte blanche to design under his name, B. Hertz was the name of the company. And from 1932 on, my gosh, she designed, I mean, you look at the names that flocked to her door. It was right. Dorothy Paley, Diana Vreeland, Mona Bismarck, Duchess of Windsor. I know she kept her doors open throughout World War II, but that must have been challenging. Tell me about that. She did, I and mean, it was a, a tragic period, but I think in a way it helped to show Belperon's true character because Bernard Hertz, the Hertz family is Jewish. Wow. And the whole family urged him to flee, and he wouldn't. And he took an interesting precaution. They decided together that, that she would buy the company outright from him. Mm -hmm. He helped, her friends helped, she scrimped and saved and put everything she possibly wow. could to officially buy the company to protect it from Nazi seizure. Belperon also joined the resistance. She was active in the Free French Resistance in Paris during the war. And very, very sadly, Bernard was actually killed in the camp. He was. But fast forward to the end of the war. Bernard's son, Jean Hertz, mm -hmm. who had survived the war as a POW, came back to Paris literally with nothing left. I mean, the shirt on his back. He presented himself and he sort of said, you know, Suzanne, remember, remember me? And she took the keys out of her pocket the keys to the to the gallery, to the store. To the store. And she handed them to him. She said, I've been holding these for your father. <laughs> they didn't know by that point for sure that he had, he had been killed. And he said, no, no, I can't, couldn't possibly accept. I know that you've bought the company. Let us be partners. Wow. And right. it became Hertz Bell Pro from then on, until then they retired on. in 1974. So how rich is the uh, Belle Prone archive? We have 9,300 drawings wow. in, in her hand. I think the most important thing to remember is that every one of these was an, was an idea, a proposal for a client. Yeah. Um, and that in most cases, the client would choose one. And out of three or four, that leaves so many that have never been made. So let's look at some jewelry. We have a few pieces here, but can we start with this? Ah, uh, yes. It's a beautiful piece. Yeah. It's, despite the fact that it's such a simple form, yeah. it is so recognizably by Belle Perone, Perone, which That's... actually brings up an interesting part yeah, about it's, it's amazing, actually. her history. She, she never signed her work, right. and honest to goodness, it was because my style is my signature. So what is the signature, then? Name three things that are the style of Belle Perone. Bold, elemental, but also there's a sensuousness to what she did. This piece, for, for me, embodies everything that is Belle Peron. She took an idea and a motif and she would boil it down to its yep. simplest form Absolutely. and just keep the essence. And I can't imagine a jewel that is this bold and glamorous and yet still as kind of organic and low key in a way with the matte finish. We think it's a masterpiece. It is yeah. a masterpiece. Yeah. I know Suzanne Belle Peron didn't just 
sell jewelry. She wore it and loved it and had a wonderful personal collection. This piece was hers. I've never seen it until today and it's just amazing. Stunning. I mean, the, the what are the materials? Simple geometry. Peking glass, which is imitation jade. We, we actually thought it was jade when we first saw it for a minute. Um, and, and lacquer and silver. Um, a very early piece that she made designed for herself. This is a piece that I've never seen before. It's in our museum collection. We have a small museum collection of about, I think it's 25 pieces of uh, original vintage Belperone. This happened to be Lauren Bacall's. Lauren Bacall's. This piece you were telling me about earlier, this is remarkable because it looks so contemporary and yet the design is from 1918. It is the idea of these panels of gold that just float on a single piece of rock crystal. I mean, the piece, a perfectly pure, optically clean yeah. piece of rock crystal began at several thousand carats, carved down by hand into this very disciplined shape. And there's no room for error. In right. We, we, this was not the first try, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> the original design, in fact, I have here. Which I'd love to see it. Um, it's amazing. That, I mean, this is from her hand. From her hand. She designed this in 1918 while still in uh, her art school. Yeah. Actually as a ring. Um, but it's the same. But you can see yeah. uh, that it's actually the same geometry, the same layout, pure what you'd call Art Deco, but easily seven years before Art Deco was even named. The last thing we have here on the table, she loved pearls, right? She I loved feel pearls. like pearls show up in Belle Prom jewels all the time, and these are Fantastic. So this is a, an original Suzanne Bell Perone design and you're making it now. This is something that's currently in your stock. It is indeed. We, right? made, we made this within the last couple of months. And how do you decide from those 9,000 designs, how do you decide which ones to, to put back into production? I'm lucky to get to go flip through 9,300 drawings and pick what we make <laughs> next. Excellent. That sounds like a good job to me. Well, I can't wait to see what you pull out of the archives next. I'm going to come back and visit often. Thank you very much for having me, sharing these beautiful jewels, your expertise, this gorgeous salon. It's been a great day. Thank you, Nico. Frank, thanks for All coming. All right, we'll see you again. Pleasure.